Hey builders, this is Brian Gardner, WP Engine Developer Advocate. Today I'm going to walk through version 1.0 of the Frost WordPress theme. I'm going to show you visual updates, share some insights into design choices I made, and also demonstrate the build process for several of the patterns. All right, so this is Frost, the, as we call it, the ultimate WordPress theme for website builders. Uh, taken a little bit of the copy from the original site, fresh patterns, endless layouts, and infinite designs. I think one of the things that we're learning with WordPress now, and you'll see this, and in fact, uh, Rich Tabor on Twitter just the other day sort of asked a question about child themes, and there were some comments where people were like, I'm not even sure like themes are what they will, what they'll be in the future will be what they ever were. And so uh, the idea of theme libraries and hundreds of themes and things like that um, arguably could be um, something that doesn't necessarily translate the way that it did. Uh, I'll walk you through and explain a few of those things, but this is sort of the new look version of Frost, um, what you see here, the gradients, the blues, and a little bit black and white because that's sort of signature. Uh, I'm going to go through here. And let's, before we get going on Frost moving forward, let's just take a few minutes and talk about like the iteration of Frost, how it started, why I created it, and sort of what it is now before we release this next version. So about two summers ago, I was thinking about a friend of mine, Rafal, who has a uh, Figma product called Design Kit. And um, actually, you know what, Sam, did we get the, I forgot about this. Do we have the um, the link to the slideshow? Yep, I'll drop it in. So um, this is a live, I, I was going to build this on local. I love local, use local. But I was like, you know what, in the event that, um, let me get this chat out of the way so people can see. Um, in the event people want to actually follow along, I moved it to the Frost website. So this is live. So Sam's going to drop the link in chat and you can follow along these slides as I'm going through them. And so we're now on slide two. Just use the little pagination here at the top once you get to the first one to sit next and you'll get to slide two. And so um, back to a couple summers ago, I was thinking about my friend Rafal. He has this product called Design Kit. Uh, we got a handy link here. This is you can follow along. And this is his product. So this is a Figma product. And it was really just like a $99 thing, uh, all in one tool for Figma, wireframe kit, web style guide, sort of a thing. And this was really like built for designers, developers, freelancers, solopreneurs, agencies, even, you know, for people to go in and quickly sort of mock things up and turn them over to clients. And I I love Rafal. He worked with us at Studio Press for several years, one of the best designers I know. And I was like, this is just really cool. And so two years ago, Block Editor and Gutenberg was starting to become a thing. And I'm going to kind of scroll up and down here just so you can get a little bit uh, better view. But again, the link is also on the slide. And so really what it is, it's like a, a library of patterns, really. Um, they're not patterns in Figma, but they're, they're you know, wireframe pieces, components, sections that you can copy and paste and move around and build out a very, uh, very nice page quickly. And so I was thinking about that. And at the time, I was like, what if there was a way to sort of do the same thing, but in WordPress? And at that point, patterns were starting to become a thing. And we were talking about that. And so what I did with Frost was, and I won't open my Figma, but I basically recreated what he created here, my own version, my own style, called it Frost. Like at the time, it was the Figma version of Frost. And so I went through and I built out a bunch of headers and footers and hero sections and sort of call to actions and whatever. And I was like, okay, now that I've got them designed, let's see how easy they are to build. And so I went in and created a blank theme called Frost. At the time, the original version of Frost was a Genesis child theme, uh, but there was still the capability of registering patterns. So I started building out the patterns and I realized I'm like, this is actually really interesting. And so I recreated everything I had done in Figma uh, inside of this Frost WordPress theme. And then I started inserting patterns into a blank page. And it basically worked as expected, where you could just go in, select your header, select your um, thing. And I'll kind of walk through that here in just a few minutes, what that actually looks like. And so that was sort of how Frost got started. So this is what we're looking at here, version 0.9.10. That is the current stable version of Frost. Uh, it is very black and white, very non-opinionated with design and kind of on purpose. It was just serving as like a foundation or a framework. The current version of Frost has five colors uh, registered in the theme palette. And so you can see them here, uh, the black and white, of course, base and contrast. And then we had, uh, I picked three just sort of arbitrary colors. 
primary, secondary, and tertiary thought they kind of looked good together, blended some in gradients and thought they looked really, really good. Uh, all of these in the current version of Frost pass accessibility. Uh, you'll notice the teal requires black for that to uh, pass testing. And so it was a good place to start. 0 0.9, 0 0.10, Nick Diego, who's on this call, uh, it helped significantly over the last year and a half uh, with the development of Frost. And that's that's sort of where we've been. About two and a half, three months ago, I talked to our product team, our uh, at VP of product at WP Engine. And I was like, you know, I'm like, uh, WordPress 6.2 is coming out, scheduled for March 28th. That really levels the playing field in terms of like the differences between WordPress core and uh, Gutenberg the plugin. And I was like, you know, I, there's really no real reason to call this experimental anymore, right? Like we sort of hid behind the experimentalness of Frost up until this point. You know, it's it's experimental. It's labeled that way in the same way Gutenberg is. But now that WordPress core has going to remove the beta label from the site editor and things like that. I was like, I feel like this is like a really good time to like bring it to a point where we can kind of call it production ready, do some updates to take advantage of things that are in WordPress 6.2. I was like, you know, it's really almost there. We're at 0 0.9 point 10. Like to get it to 1.0 really wouldn't take a whole lot of effort, but I think it would be a really good thing for the community. And so Frost version 1.0, we talked that through. We've got sort of a plan of attack of how we're planning on kind of moving this out. Uh, and inside of the link here, just links off to the Frost homepage, which I'll just do a scroll up and down. So I, I, this is obviously uh, frostwp.com is built on the Frost theme. It's got the latest updates of theme colors and things like that. I'll also get to that here shortly. Um, so that's Frost 1.0. Now, because I'm a designer and I'm a meticulous person and I want to completely uh, be behind the decisions and all of this to a fault. Uh, I decided to take the original Frost logo, which was done by a friend of mine, Sean, and do it a little bit more different. I'm like, okay, let's 1.0 it. And so what I did was I redesigned the Frost logo inside of Figma. And I was like, let's just make things even and geometrically precise. And because I'm a pixel perfect, uh, obsessive compulsive person to a fault, and so I went ahead and updated the logo. So like the last couple of, uh, probably the last month or two, I've updated the instances of the, the Frost logo and stuff like that. So this is sort of like the now new geometrically precise logo. So I thought that might be fun to share. The next thing I had to do was uh, change the color palette. I, I really wanted, I, Frost has always had sort of a blue piece to it. It feels very wintry. So it, it made sense to stay in the blue realm. Uh, I went around the internet and found some sources of inspiration for like this, the types of blue that I wanted to do. And so what I did was like the base and contrast non-negotiable, you need to have black and white. Uh, this version of Frost will add a neutral uh, color. This is a very, very light gray, the EEE hex code uh, used in several places kind of without throughout the theme. So like, let me put this into the palette. And I was like, uh, let's pick a prime, let's pick a color. And so uh, what I wanted to do uh, was pick a, the right color blue. And I'm meticulous around the decisions of colors. And for some reason, I just, everything has to be like exact and precise for me. So I just went to what I have a link here on slide six, the, my handy dandy uh, HTML color codes. And this is a list of all of the web safe colors, 216 colors. And so like, well, this is a good place to start. Let's really make this a uh, well-built theme and make sure that everything it is and stands for uh, is, is clear, concise, um, passes testing and all that kind of stuff. And so I came here and just decided to kind of like scroll up and down. So I just, I scrolled down to kind of where the darker blues were. And so I, I played around and probably spent more time than I should have uh, updating the color palette and theme JSON with all of these different hex codes to just see how it looked. And uh, 000FF, which may actually be the original like hyperlink color from like 40 years ago. Um, that's this color right here that I'm circling around. And I was like, this feels right. I put it on the site, I looked through it. I'm like, this feels like the right blue, but there should be like an extra blue, just like an extra sort of darker shade just for different purposes. Um, and so I just want one, two steps over the 00099. 
was something that I picked, and that's what this one is here. And on this page, if you click each of these links, you'll see uh, what it does is it pops open the um, the two colors, the black and the, or the blue and the white. Let me go back to the slide. So this is a demonstration of passing the accessibility test. And so each of those links will sort of open up new windows and you can see the 000FF and you know the, the pure white passes all of these accessibility tests. And so that's how we came to the color, the color palette. I'll click on this one too. This is just the darker blue. You can see it's an even stronger contrast ratio. So uh, that was from a designer's perspective, like one of the biggest things is to like land on the colors. And so, as you can see here, passes all of the accessibility testing for color contrast. Next thing, um, and, and even color was first for me. Uh, font was second. These are the two things as a designer and anybody who really uses a theme, like are the colors right and do the words look right? And so um, at the time, uh, Frost initially launched, I believe it's pronounced Yoast, J-O-S-T, was the original font that Frost launched with. Uh, but over time, uh, Google Fonts came out with this new um, uh, font called Outfit, which I came across and I have yet to be able to replace. And it's been a long time. So uh, on slide seven here, you'll see this is an example of Outfit. I have a link here that goes to the Outfit font on Google. And it just, for me, it's geometric, it's very readable, and it's exactly what I want it to be. And I think it holds up really, really well from small uppercase to really, really, really large, um, thicker weights. It's a variable font, which means anywhere from, I think it's 100 to 900, you can use any weight in between. And so it's also a lightweight file itself inside of the theme that's packaged. And so Frost will be shipping with the outfit font. It's the font that it's been for quite some time now. And everything I do, I, I, it's been really hard to find a font I like better, especially from Google, because those can be packaged and bundled with a the theme. So, um, so that was the font choice. The next thing I had to do, uh, the original version of Frost 0. Point, and stable version 0. 0.9.10 has a ton of patterns. And the theme was originally built with basically black and white versions, basically inverted versions of each other. Uh, and in addition to that, everything was full width. In other words, these sections of call to actions and heroes or whatever, the, the background went full width. And I wanted to just change things up and keep things a little fresher and a little bit cleaner. And so I've, I'm going through, because I'm still working on some stuff, um, the, and, and updating some of the patterns that come with Frost, removing a lot of duplication because some of the patterns were just like duplicates of each other with just like a background color change. And I was like, well, let's save a file and just ship it with one and users make, it's very easy to change a background color uh, inside of a pattern. So if you click on the link here, this takes you to the Frost Patterns page. These are the patterns that are currently in the theme. Uh, there might be more that show up before we actually release it. But at a minimum, this sort of just gives you an idea of what's here. I'll just click on one of these just so you can see. You know, so these are the the four patterns for these featured boxes that come. You know, so options for people to build, and it's easy to duplicate a column to make that four columns and so on. So patterns uh, are a huge part of the moving forward part of WordPress. I think from an agency perspective, a builder perspective. Um, building and establishing uh, even sort of like an internal version of like a pattern library. Pattern library is um, something that I think is going to be really powerful for people who build with WordPress moving forward. And I've been bullish on them ever since they came out. So patterns were another big sort of decision on what to do and sort of how to do them. One thing uh, we're going to add now, uh, th there's two right now inside of the, the current version of Frost. Uh, calling them layouts, the kind of full page patterns, whatever you want to kind of refer them to. Uh, but there is uh, the ability within a pattern to register um, sort of like a prompt that when you create a new page, uh, a modal pops up and says, would you like to create a full page pattern? And if so, pick your pattern where you click the button and then it just shows up uh, in the editor top to bottom as it's been built. And then you can customize it from there. So uh, if you click on this little little link, I've added a layouts uh, link to the menu. We've got a home page and the link page. The link page is kind of like the, the link tree-esque thing. 
and then I'll just back up and the the home page. This would be um, insertable into a WordPress page in just one click, and then from there you can go. Uh, I have plans on adding more layouts, a couple of you know maybe about pages, service pages, sort of pre-built uh, pages, so that you could effectively create a brand new WordPress install and in five clicks have five pages that then you can showcase to clients, you can use to customize uh, and so on. So that's the sort of intent with layouts, which is also up here. Moving on. One of the, the things I'm really, really excited about with WordPress uh, and it's uh, aside from menus, the thing I think I hear most, which is uh, well, what about responsiveness, right? Like I need to make sure like this is easy and responsive and it works well. WordPress 6.2 and even before that, I think 6.1 at least, uh, maybe in the comments, Nick, you can you can confirm that, uh, it has two features that sort of change the game with web development. One is called fluid spacing. The other one is called fluid typography. And really what this is, and I'll click on this link and show here in a second, is uh, it from a spacing perspective, it allows you to um, padding margin and other things, uh, not use hard pixels, like as definite, like it's not just 40 pixels padding. You can sort of use uh, fluid spacing uses like a clamp function, which basically says, hey, for this padding, go from 20 pixels to 80 pixels. So like on a desktop view, the 80 pixels is there as you want, but it reduces down. And I'll demonstrate that here in just a second. So if you click on this, this takes you to the styles page on Frost and fluid spacing is this. Let's see if I could pop this out and then demonstrate. So each one of these has like a, a certain like spacing, a preset spacing. So uh, for instance, these boxes have large and what I'll do is I'll inspect so you can see. So this large box right here, uh, let me get inside there. You can see right here has spacing these presets spacing large. And so if I click on that, it takes you down here in the lower right-hand corner. You can see clamp. So it says go at all the way down to as low as 40 pixels in that space, depending on viewport width, uh, and go as high as 80 pixels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the width of the screen and just watch how the spacing inside of here, I'll go down here because it's the easiest to see. So just watch how Oh, Brian, we can't see that because of the uh, the screen sharing. Ah, uh, let me let me go inside of here then. I'm sorry. You can see this now, right? I'm sorry. We can, yeah, we can see that. Okay, so I'll just do this inside of. And as I reduce the screen, you can see the spacing doesn't hold at that 80 pixels, which would look really bad on mobile. It scales down and sort of automatically, we'll call it. Um, does that. Now, if you go back to the styles page, uh, fluid typography is the same sort of thing where you can say, hey, I want to set inside of my theme the ability for someone to, to display 72 pixel text. However, 72 pixel text on an iPhone looks really, really bad. And so there's also, a, a, it's, a, it's built a little bit differently, but it's still the same concept, which is, and I'll scroll here, watch the text size as I reduce the screen. You can see it scales down and handles sort of itself automatically. So like on an iPhone, maybe it breaks down to like 36 pixels or whatever. And so uh, these are two features that I am really, really excited about because between the two of them, it handles most of um, responsiveness out of the box. I realize there's some decision points and breakpoints relative to rows and columns that this isn't exactly addressing. But for the most part, when you build a responsive website, these are the two things I think that matter the most. Documentation, uh, everybody's favorite to consume, always hard to produce uh, because it's fun to build. And for, at least for me, I like to build and less about uh, writing about it. But here we are. So uh, one of the things I'm really excited about, believe it or not, is uh, for us, the website is going to have, clicking on the link up here, a documentation section where uh, very specific to Frost using WordPress core best practices and methodologies, we're going to start to sort of walk people through how things were built with Frost, sort of how to change them. Uh, as an example, the content width inside of Frost, uh, there's two values, the regular content size and like the wide size. And what, what we're gonna do here is um, 
show the code and also no code way of doing these things, right? Because as builders, we can just you know pop open a code editor, uh, open up theme JSON and change them. But WordPress is also built for users. And so there's ways to do these um, sort of within the UI as well, right? So this is under global styles. So like a user could go in without having to know code and just change these values. Uh, same holds true with colors. You know, this is how one would change colors inside of a theme JSON file. But then if you scroll down here, you can see inside of global styles, there's now a very easy point and click and choose your own hex code way of doing this. So we're kind of going to address how to do these things, basic things in Frost uh, for both sets of folks who use WordPress. Next up, uh, Frost currently and has since its iteration uh, has been on GitHub as a sort of uh, free thing. And so uh, if you click on the link here, you'll see the current stable version of Frost uh, over here in the 0 0.9 release. So it's been a few months, but this is all the work. Everything that you see here is up to date. Everything that is new in Frost can actually be pulled down and played with and tested as we speak. We have not officially tagged it and we're not releasing it yet. I'll get to that here in a second. Um, but you could just go through, like, if you click on the, the commits, oops. You can see all of the work that's been done, you know, in over the last several, several months, actually, you'll see an updated color palette, you know, rebuilding this, clear this and all of that. So you can kind of follow along to see, you know, if you're super, super nerdy and you want to understand what it's like to, you know, what change was made and how it was changed, you can go in and see these things. Uh, I provide the link to GitHub, which is also on the main Frost uh, website itself. Um, also, for those who want to contribute, if you have ideas or you see bugs, um, it's a great place. We've had some people from the community report issues. Uh, we would love to make this a collaborative thing. It's something that uh, WP Engine is doing uh, for free. It's an open source theme. And uh, we would love to have you, if you've got great ideas or whatever, create issues, suggestions, feature requests, things of that nature. Um, that would be awesome to have people involved with that as well. Hey, Brian, there's a question in the chat. Uh, fluid typography has been in Frost for a while, but is fluid spacing included yet now or only in 1.0? That is a really good question. Um, I'm trying to remember. No. Shall we pivot? Uh, let's pivot. Uh, so you go here, you go to download. I'm going to pull this up locally. Let me just pop open my theme JSON really quickly. I don't know if it's in the most stable version. I can't remember. Uh, and I'll tell you, tell you all in just a second here. Yes, actually, it does look like the the latest version. Um, and if you guys can see, maybe you can't see my screen because maybe it was only Chrome. Um, yes, inside theme JSON, I see spacing sizes for steps with clamp. So I believe, yes, the latest version, 0 0.9.1. So if you pull down the zip file, uh, that should be in there. Close out of my extra tabs. So phase one of Frost 1.0 is to just get it complete and push it to GitHub and make it a stable release, which then can be downloaded via the site. Uh, one of the other really, really exciting things that we're working towards is sort of the next phase. Uh, and my guess is this will not take place until after 6.2 releases because we really want to shed the experimental, like need the Gutenberg plugin um, for it and want to be able to work with stable WordPress core. So. All of the features that are going into it now concurrently, like as you see in GitHub, are sort of on the presumption that they're in 6.2. The Frost demo site or the Frost website itself is running. Uh, and if it's not out yet, it should be out today, 6.4 beta. Uh, it's running WordPress 6.2 beta 3 so that everything that's coming in WordPress core itself uh, is being supported by the things that we're adding to it. And so uh, once 6.2 drops, maybe the day of or shortly thereafter, uh, it is my hope that we will submit Frost to the WordPress theme directory, which should give it, uh, I'm hoping, quite a bit of mileage, maybe some coverage in the WordPress news space. Uh, but that's a pretty exciting step. I've got personally some themes on the repo 
uh, which are great. But um, I think on behalf of WP Engine, it would be really, really cool to say, hey, this is something we invested in. This is something we've been building for two years. If we feel like it's a relatively bulletproof theme at this point, and why not share it with everybody uh, to use? So that is our hope and goal. Uh, and I do not see that changing. Um, I'm going to just showcase a couple of patterns that I will go build at, towards the end of the call. Um, we're kind of wrapping up the slideshow here, but uh, in between me uh, walking through these and then actually going to build them, we will open it up for questions. So feel free to have some in the uh, in the chat. Feel free to start dropping them in now if you want to. That way, Sam has a running list. Uh, so this is going to be a theme. This is just a call to action pattern. I will walk people through how to build that. You click on the link. It just takes you to the page that we're going to end up building. Uh, and then these next couple are the same thing. This this color box I saw on a website, not exactly the way it is here, but uh, as I draw inspiration from CSS galleries, I saw this thing. I was like, that's a really cool thing. That'd be really cool to build. So uh, I will build this also before your very eyes. You can click on this and this is where we're going to build it. Uh, and then the next one is a pricing table. Uh, I thought that would be kind of cool to... Um, WordPress blocks now really the settings that are inside of them really help us make these things easier. I think when Nick and I first built pricing tables, so there was some some relative hackery involved to get it to way we, we wanted with groups inside of groups so that we could do certain things. But uh, we've been able to kind of pare that down. So this is uh, exciting. So that'll be clicking on that. You can see this is what we'll build. Uh, and then the last one is just a sample testimonial section. Uh, including the use of a row down here. So that'll kind of walk through that, assuming we have time. So this is um, where we'll get to. So I want to take a break. We're about halfway through to kind of open things up for questions, um, mainly around Frost and just questions about roadmaps or how things are built or decisions that have been made and so on. So feel free to drop those in there. And Sam, if you don't mind, um, reading questions, um, just so I don't have to scroll through them. It might be really tough yep. to. I've got one right now from uh, Lauren Gray. Actually, she <laughs> says, "Is Frost meant to be a parent theme like the block theme version of Genesis?" Wow, going right for it. She must have seen uh, Rich's tweet about child themes. So, the way I see it is, Frost can be used well several ways, but three main ways. Users can download Frost and then just use it on their website and then through the use of global styles and site editor settings and things like that, change some colors and just use it out of the box. Um, the other way is agencies could take, and I actually bought the domain, believe it or not, because that's what I do, forkfrost.com. <laughs> Several months ago, I was like, that'd be really fun to just tell people to fork it. Um, so agency or, so, or anybody else could essentially take Frost and fork it. Uh, that means literally just pulling it down. And the first thing I would recommend is rename the theme, rename all the functions to whatever you want to. Jeremy Tuckman, I don't think he's on this call right now, but uh, he happens to be on build mode all the time. He's done that for himself. He's, he forked it. He's got a theme called Monk, which was basically Frost, for, Frost forked, and then he made it his own. Uh, so that's uh, another way to do it. And then there's kind of this, I, Lauren, to your point, um, and because it still exists inside of WordPress and it is supported, and I don't think it's going to change, uh, block themes can support child themes. Um, and there's several ways to sort of um, do what a child theme could do. It doesn't necessarily require a child theme. There's different ways with inside of like global style variations and stuff like that. But um, and something I'm interested in doing and is is using a child theme. So if Frost is the parent theme, you would just literally create a new theme. It could be blank. And so anything you add into that theme basically uh, replaces or sort of takes precedent over what's inside of the Frost main theme. So if you created a child theme and created a theme JSON file and just put like the settings and color palette in there, it would scan the child theme and say, ah, these are the new color settings. So trump what's in Frost. In other words, if you wanted to just, you know, use the fr like Frost as like the in the same way Genesis was back in the day, uh, more in the sort of um, the HTML, the markup, and all of that. This is just more general templates and and style settings and whatever. You could make it your own and um, do things. The argument that I had against what Rich tweeted about yesterday was this: um, 
because of the way WordPress works now and will continue to work, um, if you said, I have a design, an opinionated design, doesn't look like Frost, but it's got you know different color header and different layout and all of this stuff, one could very easily um, build that with Frost. You can go in, you could make all of your changes. That's the beauty of full site editing. So in theory, uh, I don't think there's ever a need to go beyond one theme ever because you could go in and make it what you want. You could change the templates. You can you know, change the way the query works. You could do anything. You could rebuild the header, the footer, you know, add fonts, do all that kind of stuff. Users, end users, people who would like go buy a theme um, are probably less capable of doing that on their own. And so the argument for child themes or just theme variations is, hey, we as builders need to do that work to bridge the gap. Users are incapable of creating this new unique layout themselves, even though it's possible. So we will do the work for them and serve it up by way of a child theme. So I don't know if that answers your question, but um, I have my own personal like block theme and I have a bunch of different ideas and I just spin up child themes just to sort of see what they can look like. So I personally like child themes. I don't know from a, like a long-term perspective where things land, but if you're an agency and you for frost and you have your, and you rewrite it to be your own parent theme, like that could be very powerful because then you could deploy your base theme uh, across all of your client sites and make the customizations by way of a child theme. So. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Yep. Another question, uh, Gabriel M asked about the outfit font. So the outfit font doesn't play nice with diacritics, Romanian language in this case, any recommendation for solving this or just change the font as the developer on each site that uses that particular language? I'll be perfectly honest. I'm not really savvy as it relates to um, things of that nature, right? Like uh, different languages and different characters and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you found something on Google that you just found out of the box works better or just is a better fit, uh, I would just recommend at that r rather than trying to like understand how to make outfit work for your specific case. Uh, there's probably some, some, you know, pop-ins comes to mind. I'm trying to think of a couple of just like relatively similar fonts, um, that might actually be better extended or better in those cases. That would be my recommendation. You know, you could go to the outfit font, it's, font it's the font site itself, and there might be, um, things you can add to CSS to sort of enable some extra things. Um, but hopefully that helps. Thanks. And uh, Laura actually has a question about the outfit font as well. Um, she says, is outfit the only font or do you have a backup in Frost? Um, let's see. Outfit is the only font you, I, uh, I'm trying to find. So outfit is the only font in there, but there is the basic sans serif backup in sort of the CSS declaration. In other words, if something gets broken in the outfit font files or whatever, um, it'll serve the the um, the system sans serif font, which you know with Apple is with San Francisco or you know whatever. So it's basically it re reverts back to like a system font stack uh, for whatever the browser is, um, because the font itself is packaged with the theme. It should hold up. I don't know that there would there's no need to do anything beyond that. You don't need to add something to the top of style sheet. You don't need to add a function or a script or anything like that. Uh, and because the theme font is packaged with the theme, it is not dialing home to Google. GDPR concerns are relatively alleviated and all of that. So that's sort of the intent behind uh, WordPress's font API is how to package themes. And there's a lot of work going on inside of the create block theme plugin. Michael, if you're handy, uh, I know you're familiar with that link. Uh, the create block theme plugin is, is doing a lot of work with easily adding Google fonts to a theme. Uh, in a way that's like literally a couple of clicks. So. Awesome. And then one other question uh, from Sean, any newer sites demonstrating Frost's potential? Uh, yes. Uh, Sam, why don't you drop a link? This is Sam is Sam's site is actually using the current version of Frost, the current stable version. Um, so Sam's link, and I think I responded to you on Twitter on this one too. Uh, Sam's, yes, thank you, Sam. Um, yes, Sam, oh mine. Uh, Sam's using Frost. I know Jeremy Pollock 
um, who I think it's Jeremy Pollock dot me. I, I think maybe dot dev. Uh, he was playing around with frost on his site. Um, I've seen some, I know, uh, Dustin, uh, who does a lot of build modes. He builds a lot of stuff on frost. So even, um, some of his stuff has it. Uh, my expectation is if, and when it gets to the wordpress.org theme directory, we're going to start to see uh, a lot more people using it because similar to WordPress and full site editing, I think a lot of people are like, okay, it's experimental, which means play with it, do it locally, things like that. Um, I think that's the case. Obviously the frostwp.com website is running frost, um, out of the box, uh, it's the, le- the bleeding version of frost and, um, oh yeah, Sean, cool. You saw the tweet. So, so here's an example, and I could probably build all kinds of ideas and things like that off of this. So once, once this hits the street, I can have some fun on the side and, uh, I'll probably build what effectively were for those of you who've been following frost for a while, uh, we did this thing called starter sites for a while, which is kind of like some opinionated ideas that we're using XML files to replicate. Not quite ideal, but, uh, I wanted to demonstrate, Hey, this team could do like a lot of really cool things. So. Uh, once this comes out to V1.0, I will probably personally spin up a whole bunch of just different ideas using Frost just to showcase its potential and and maybe even link to them like on the website here, like under like a showcase or a gallery or whatever um, sort of a thing. So, Awesome. I don't see any more questions in the chat. Oh, just kidding. Uh, two just came in. So Cheryl asked, to make sure I understand, can we currently use Frost on a live production site or is it currently for local use only? Uh, Sam is, Sam's site is live and it's using the latest stable version of Frost. Um, Dustin, as I just mentioned, probably has five different sites that are running Frost. Uh, Like most things in life, uh, kind of use at your own risk. I feel like even though it's experimental, uh, it's not really, I mean, we've been working on frost for a year and a half and I spent a lot of time inside of there. Uh, frost will not break anything right now. Um, what I will say is once we get to V1.0, the idea behind putting it on the repo means that the auto update system will be triggered, which is not currently the case because we just don't have that set up with GitHub. Uh, and so things that will likely change in future versions will more so be around the inclusion of patterns and things that just wouldn't break a site anyways. Uh, I would say with a very, very small asterisk, Frost right now is very production ready and has been for quite some time. So I would use it on anything I would build uh, for clients and I, and I have. So hopefully that answers your question. So you don't have to keep it local. I mean, most people just play with it locally to see how it's built and how it works. Um, but if you feel comfortable taking it and putting it on a live site, go for it. Awesome. And then uh, we probably have time for one more question before you do your next part, Brian. But uh, the question from Anton says, how does the latest Frost compare to Powder, Powder, Mormont as a framework or a starter? So just differentiating between those two themes, I think. Yes, Anton, I'm going to throw a snowball at you here because you're close enough to me where I almost can. Um, great question. And I've been asked this often. Um, powder is my personal thing. I mentioned this earlier. It's just a personal theme. Like, uh, back when frost included multiple patterns, I was like, you know what? I spin up so many sites for fun. I'm going to fork frost. I'm going to call it powder. I'm going to strip out all the patterns and just keep it as a base theme. It's on the repo. Um, people can use that as a base and starter theme thing. But as that got simpler, that's when I made the, the, so let's take frost and sort of turn this into like an actual usable theme, not just keeping it as a base theme, not just serving up wireframe patterns, but sort of opinionating the design and making this actually present itself as a theme people could use to build for client sites or for themselves. And so as powder becomes like simpler, Frost becomes more of like a very specifically, you know, and and Frost, even though it can be like a parent child theme thing, the idea behind this is just to say, hey, we're just going to make one theme. We're going to offer some patterns that make sense for maybe like an agency builder kind of thing. Um, and there's different ways you can serve up a theme, you know, like a food blogger, a fashion blogger, you know, whatever niche, you know, we didn't want to have a theme that had like thousands of patterns because that just doesn't make sense. And it's not practical um, for, for a theme that we just put out on the repository. So generally the idea is, Hey, this is a, just a, something to learn from something to use something to model, you know, development after. And so <laughs> Snowball, yes, you're right, Michael. Uh, staying on theme, so Frost is more of a, a consumable, production ready theme, and you know, Powder is just more of a my personal sort of thing that I've got for free. So, 
hope that answers your question. It does because your thumb is up. So uh, unless there's any more questions, I'd love to just jump in and start building, um, just showing how some of these patterns were built. Again, I think it's fun to watch. I think people, I think it's easier. Uh, we talked about this on build mode. Easy is sort of like a subjective word, but I feel like once people understand like, and Nick has done such a great job with his online workshops, like demonstrating how to use certain features within WordPress. Uh, and so that is what we are going to do. So I'm going to close out of here. I'm going into the back of Frost website. And so I'm going to start with a call to action. I've got this page set up. We're going to build this underneath itself. I just wanted it there for reference. Uh, and so I am in a regular WordPress page. I will come down here and I'm going to start with the row and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, and so I've just created a row block and the row basically works in a way, it's kind of like columns, but it's not really because columns are very specifically columned and you could specify width and things like that. But there's some benefits to rows, it uses um, Flexbox, which means you can space things really, really well. Uh, and so as you can see here, uh, it's created a row with the content width in mind. That's just how it comes in. Uh, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna change the width to 1200 pixels because on the screen, I want it to be wide width. And so you'll see when you click on that, then it sort of becomes wide. I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna copy this. So basically we've got paragraph text here and a button here. And so I'm gonna go back into my row and the first item is gonna be a paragraph. And so I just went ahead, let me duplicate and keep this. It might be easier to see, there we go. And so I've got a row now with a paragraph inside of it. I also want to add a button. And so I'm just going to go ahead and add a button. And I'm going to say, get started. Oops. Get started today. I'm going to update this and just kind of incrementally show you how this works. So I've got a row now and it's basically said, okay, there's two items in this row, just kind of shove them in there. Um, You'll notice that there's a border around the row. So I'm going to come down here and select the row. Hey, Brian, there's a yeah. request in the chat. Uh, can you open the list view? I think that might be helpful for watching and following along as well. Uh, yeah, I, I can. I'll go back and forth because it's it's harder to see when you're on list view. I don't know if this. Perfect. Thank you. If you can shrink this or maybe if I make this wider, that might be more helpful. Aha, uh -huh, yes, we can see. I don't know if you can see as well, but we can see much better there. Okay, so here, so... This is the row, uh, whoops, this is the fickle WordPress. Uh, so you got row, you got a paragraph, you got buttons, and inside of the button block is the one. Okay, so I'm going to select the whole row, and I want to add some padding around there. I'm going to go here to settings. Uh, I've established a step spacing scale inside of Frost, so every one of these little tick marks is like 20 pixels. And so it uses t-shirt sizes, so it goes from zero, extra small. You can see the outline 20 pixels, 40 pixels. 60, 80, and 100. And this 100 on desktop, this is what I was talking about earlier. On mobile, it will shrink down and respond down to either 40 or 50. Um, so it doesn't quite look, it doesn't fill in as much space. So I've gone ahead and added padding. I think I actually maybe have 80 pixels. So I've got padding in there, but you see there's also a border. So the Roblox supports border. So I'm going to add a border around that. And so we're getting there. Uh, this uses larger font size. So I just go into the paragraph, uh, change the font size uh, because I'm a line height person. I want to make it easier to read. And so I'm going to update here and we just see where we sit. So, okay, so we're getting there now. And I talked about this on build mode. So what we have here now is two blocks. You've got the paragraph block and the buttons block, um, but this isn't exactly how we want this, right? Like we want to, we want this to visually look like what we've got up here. Uh, one of the newer features coming to WordPress uh, 6.2 uh, is a setting under dimension called width. And so what that does is it allows you to sort of specify the width of that. And inside of this, I'm just going to say 600 pixels. I'm going to update that and watch what happens. So it's going to take this paragraph and say, go max width 600 pixels. And so it, if I change this, the 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 number, it'll match. But um, so now we're getting there. 
So you'll see though, there's a separation between the button, which is aligned right inside of there and the paragraph. Uh, but this, all it does is it just kind of aligns everything left right now. Uh, inside of the row, there's a setting here called justification. Uh, and I think one of Nick's favorite um, options is space between items. And so if you do that and update it, I'm gonna refresh my screen. You'll see it puts space in between the items, which basically means you're gonna like spread things out. Now, if you had three columns or th not three columns, but three items in the row, it would it would space it would span th the width of the container and put a nice space in between each thing. Um, so, for instance, this header is an example of a row that has the site logo, the menu, the navigation menu, and then a button, and then it has space between. So it kind of spreads things out and makes them uh, the way we want. So that's the call to action. So that's literally all it is. I mean, if you wanted to kind of get cute and customize quickly, you could go into the color setting, you could change it to black, you can change that to white, you know, and then all of a sudden you have the inverse of that. Uh, there's other settings that you can um, specify, like if you wanted to change the border radius and things like that. Um, or if you wanted to add a shadow to it, this is an interesting way to do something, you know, to make a call to action box that has a shadow. This is a block style that Frost currently has, uh, which supports block, uh, box shadow. So uh, I'm going to go on to the next one because we're kind of getting close on time. So I wanted to just kind of talk through a few of these uh, colored boxes. This is um, one of my faves. So I'll try to just roll through this a little quicker just to to, to demonstrate it. Um, this I actually built with columns just because it just was easier to build. Um, so what I'll do here is just go in. I'm going to select the columns block. Uh, I'm just going to pick arbitrarily two, but you can go to the setting. I've got now four. And of course, again, we want this to be wide width. So we make it wide width. Um, and this is me cheating. So I'm just going to copy and paste the same thing in here. I'm just going to kind of fake some things just for demonstration purposes. So I'm just going to go into each column and just copy and paste this text. You could go in and just add, you know, you could remove the link and add a button if you wanted to sort of a thing. Okay, so we got this. So uh, I'm going to go to this column. I'm going to go to the color settings. I'm just going to just quickly do things like this. And uh, then I'm going to go to this column. I'm going to change the background color to the dark blue. And again, all the text and all the links inside, change it to white because accessibility. This column is using um, my favorite blue. And then I'll just do this one really quickly. This column is using the neutral. Uh, okay, so a couple things here. Let me hit update and see where we kind of stand between the two of them. So, okay, we're kind of getting there, right? Like we've got things in, and, and this is how uh, building with WordPress kind of works is like, you just have to like kind of build it out, right? You understand where all the settings are and how to get there. You just have to start and just start. Um, I'm gonna duplicate this spacer just to, again, give myself some room. Um, so what I'm going to do, so in between uh, each column, you see this big gap uh, that is called block gap. Uh, it's a very powerful thing. In this case, what we want to do is actually get rid of it. And so um, by default, Frost registers a block gap of 30 pixels in between blocks that are within sort of its uh, its own thing. So each column is has a gap of 30. So if I go to the columns block and I come over here to dimensions, block spacing, I guess is what it's called. Um, I'm going to zero that out. Like you could, you could add more spacing. Uh, you could even unlink them and space them, you know, like if you wanted to space them like tightly on desktop, but then when you stack them, add more space, you're allowed to do that. Uh, I will undo this and I'm going to zero it out. So we just are getting closer. Uh, inside each column, we want to add padding. So I would just go into the column and add the padding. Again, using step spacing that is provided within the theme. And then, la oops, last but not least, 
I'm going to click update. And there we have it. And of course, um, and I'll, I'll go through this. I'm going to ad lib this one. But so um, these colors, these blues are available in the theme color palette. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier in the tutorials that are going to be on the docs, uh, two ways to do that. You can go into the theme JSON and change that. Like, let's just say for some reason you wanted to use different colors. Um, if you're changing them globally, you would go into the editor. Uh, you can go into global styles. You can type colors. And this is the theme color palette. And so for, let's just say I'm going to, I want, I don't know, pink, whatever, pink. And then, uh, you know, a different shade of pink, right? So I'm going to save this. And what this will do is it saves to the database. Hey, this theme actually is registering new colors instead of the ones that came with it. And so this is not saved to the theme itself on your server. Uh, this is like saving to the database, which kind of overrides it. It's very easy to clear that out. I'll show you in a second. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and save this. So when I refresh my screen, I have to undo this because this is the live frost site. Um, when I refresh my screen, these should become the new colors as they are. So that is the power, and this is site wide. So like, if you like, literally clicked on the frost site, like, and go to the frost site right now, you would see now pink all over the place. Uh, and if you're like, "Oops, I didn't mean to do that," I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to say "Reset Colors," and it resets it. It goes back to the theme and says, "What were the colors?" And these are the colors. And you would hit save, and then, thankfully, we'll. Oh, everyone in the chat was so excited about the pinks <laughs> and the purples. Uh, very swift. Yeah, Mike, <laughs> Mike knows me, and Laura is all about that too. So um, don't worry, I've got some fun color things that are coming. So um, trying to think if I've got time uh, to, to, you know, I could go through one more. It's about the same same sort of a process. Um, so instead, maybe we can just open this up and finish this off with a few more questions. Uh, if anybody has it, maybe Sam, you could drop a link again to the slideshow just so people can kind of click through again. Oh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it very quickly. Uh, so Nick did this and was it WordCamp? You can shake your head yes or no. Your WordCamp presentation where you built your slide presentation in blocks and revealed that right at the end, uh, which I think everybody kind of thought was really, really cool. Uh, and so similar to that, um, all of those slides that we started with at the beginning of this presentation were literally just built with WordPress pages. I'll go to the main slide. So, and what's cool, let me get to the page really quickly. One other thing, you can see that, um, well, this, let me go to the next one. So you can see that this is like full screen. And so uh, the group block, let me select this. I'll go into list view. The group block that houses all of it has a setting now under um, dimensions called min height. So you can set it. I've set it to 100 viewport height, which means that that group will stretch top to bottom. And if it, if I remove that, and I'll showcase this here just to show. Um, and then, Brian, there's a couple of questions that have come in that I think we can answer. OK, yeah, that's fine. And if you remove it, it basically then doesn't make it go full height. Um, so I'll just update this really quickly. Uh, but each and every single one of these is just a WordPress page. I just kind of manually hard coded these links. Uh, but this is each one of these is built using blocks. Awesome. OK, cool. so one so, question is, yes. um, if the theme is built on accessibility, when you change the colors, does it lose that? Um, yes, in the sense of the colors that are chosen very specifically for accessibility. Uh, WordPress, and I'll do this also very quick, quickly. Actually, I could do it here. Um, if you select a color, uh, is this gonna, let me go into global styles. Uh, WordPress has a built-in sort of detector that says, hey, that's not quite right. Um, let me see if I can get to it really quickly. So for instance, uh, colors, if oh, that's not going to work. No. Uh, usually it's like things inside of things. Let me go back to one of these sample sample slides, like slide three real quick. Uh, and we can go a few minutes over if we need to, because I want to get to these questions. Um, so for instance, like if I'm in this column and I change this text to this little note pops up that says, uh, this might not be, this basically kind of tells you this doesn't pass accessibility. You might want to lighten it up. So you would take this and, 
you know, maybe go with something lighter or whatever. And when that thing goes away, that means the computations that whatever WordPress is kind of using says, okay, yeah, this is cool. So hopefully that Perfect. answers. And is there like a website that you go to for accessibility testing? Because if so, we can drop that in the uh, resources part of the yeah. YouTube upload. Yep. We'll go to here. This is slide six. Um, any of these links, like go to like the pre-check. Um, I'll, like you just remove that. I'll drop this in the chat right now. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, if I can get. And ironically, if you if you click that link by default, and this is also why I picked the color by default, the color that you that this service uses uh, is zero 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 ff, which is the core frost color. So I kind of cheated. I was like, well, it's automatically going to pass because it's the prototype poster child color combination of the, the tester itself. So, um, and you can play with this, like you could just pop in colors and, you know, if you're on some, if you're on a client site and you're like, Hey, that doesn't, you know, you just go to a button, find the background color, drop it in there, put, you know, and so many things fail. And I could probably see a lot of them to the naked eye. And often I will admittedly just pop this open just for grins and be like, Hey, why is Twitter doing things that are like not accessible? And I would test them and, all that kind of stuff. So it, it's a great tool. It's a very good tool. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yep. Um, and then Cheryl asked, I was excited to use Frost and now super excited for the new version. I think you mentioned March 28th. Is that the launch date? Uh, well, the official launch date on V1.0, we'll announce it on Twitter. It'll be before that because we're going to do it on our GitHub repository first where we'll bundle it, we'll package it. You could download it and play with it. Um, for the WordPress theme directory, that sort of that will hinge on 6.2 being official. And we likely won't also put it on GitHub until that point, just because um if you if we put it on before them, people are like, and they put it on 6.1, things might not work super great without the Gutenberg plugin active. And so we really want to say, hey, this is going to require 6.2. So any version 1.0 that gets officially labeled and released and bundled will be after 6.2 on purpose. Um, you can go there now and download what is currently V1.0, sort of alpha, beta, whatever you want to call it, the bleeding version uh, on GitHub right now and pull down what is on the website. Um, just know that it's not quite 1.0 yet until we actually tag it and release it. Perfect. Thank you. I think that was the last question in the chat. Very cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up my... Just do this so I can copy and paste it. Um, that's me on Twitter. Um, if you have any questions or want to follow up or have anything uh, specific to Frost or whatever, uh, feel free if you want to, you know, try to just to jump on a one on one call, even to just discuss either Frost or how this can be used for your projects or your agency or whatever. Um, that would be great. Also, um, again, it is uh, our job here to, to develop relations at WP Engine. Uh, to educate the community on what's coming with WordPress, with our own internal um, products. Uh, obviously, Frost is a product of WP Engine, as is local. And so we talk about those two things often. Uh, and for a little bit more of the technical folks, we are hosting our own conference. It's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, developer conference inside of WordPress. Um, Sam's got a link she's going to drop in there. It's called Decode. It's happening here in a few weeks. Uh, her and I will be on a panel. Uh, asking um, some people from the community, some ten up product builders, sort of like when is it right to uh, really embrace blocks and full site editing? Uh, so that'll be a don't miss. And so feel free to sign up for the Decode conference. And I'm trying to think, Sam, was there anything else I'm supposed to say or I don't share? Think so. I don't think so. I think we covered it all. Uh, again, uh, build mode uh, as well. If you haven't dropped that link, we host these calls every Friday at 10 a.m. Central Time. And so these are interactive calls, much like this, but a whole lot more conversation that takes place, people sharing how they're building stuff and whatever. And we usually kind of go topic-based. And so uh, those are very exciting calls. And we've just gotten a lot of really good insight from people. And we've been able to show pe people you know, how things are built. And we've seen several aha light bulb moments. And those are really, really fun for us. So yes, join us. There's a link. Feel free. Um, Stuart. Thumbs up. You're often there. Always good to see you there. Thank you, Rita. Um, but I think we're going to call it here again. You know, uh, our hope maybe is this was sort of the first of many 
sort of, this is a more overview of what's coming with Frost, but um, doing more builder specific things, how things can be built, how to leverage certain types of blocks and all that kind of stuff relative to Frost. So uh, I believe highly so good to see you as well. Uh, I, I think our plan is to, you know, on a semi-regular basis, every couple of weeks or at least once a month, or maybe even every week, sort of have these sort of workshops where we would just work through and, and showcase how things are built with uh, modern WordPress tooling and uh, specifically Frost. So I appreciate everyone being here. Thank you for hanging with me a little bit after the fact. And uh, we'll have this up on our YouTube channel for replay. And uh, again, uh, the slide deck is handy. Feel free to click around. I'll leave it up. And so hit me up on Twitter if you have any questions. But otherwise, thank you again for attending and have a wonderful, wonderful day.